president's executive actions, which would give legal status to some five million undocumented immigrants, were to begin to go into effect tomorrow, this judge's order stops that in, stops that in its tracks. Tomorrow, Wednesday, was to be the day where President Obama's executive action on immigration was due to finally make what he believes is the proper change for America. Protection from deportation and work permits for as many as five million undocumented immigrants. But a federal judge in Texas stopped that cold for the moment and given opponents what might be only a brief victory. So let's welcome to Midpoint and get the inside. Law professor at the University of Pennsylvania and novelist Kermit Roosevelt III joins us today. Kermit, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Happy to join you. Let's look at the legalese from this. The judge in Texas issuing his ruling. Did he get it legally correct? Well, I would say no. Um, but, you know, we're still at the preliminary injunction stage. So all he said so far is that the states that are challenging this immigration action have a likelihood of success on the merits. Okay, now then, let's dig into that a little bit more. Why then no? What is it in this ruling that, in your opinion, from a legal perspective, simply doesn't get it right or does not hold up? Well, when you think about the fundamental question here, it's whether what Obama has done is change the law in a substantive way, which he would not be allowed to do, or whether it's just exercising discretion within the framework that Congress has given him. And I believe it's the latter. The statute tells the president, decide who you're going to deport, set priorities. We've got limited enforcement resources. And really, that's all that he's done. What about, and again, I have to ask you this because it comes down to so many different stories that we hear and everybody has a different opinion. We have Texas and other states saying the executive measures were an egregious case of government by fiat that would impose huge new costs on their budgets. Now, that would seem to be a pretty logical fight if you're going to get involved in it, saying that we've got to spend more money and you're not the one who can tell us to do that. Now, does that hold up? Well, it's really not at all clear that they're going to have to spend more money. I mean, the situation that we start out with is one in which the Department of Homeland Security cannot deport all of the people who are illegally present here. So if you say to some of these people, you're the ones who don't have to worry, come out, register, you can get a work permit, does that impose more costs on the states or does it actually relieve them of costs? My guess is that it's the latter. And actually, there are states on the other side saying, we support this policy precisely because it's going to spare us some costs. Now, you're an expert on these things. And again, this is what you follow on a day-to-day -day basis. Here we have Ken Paxton, the Attorney General of Texas. He calls this a victory for the rule of law in America and a crucial first step in reining in President Obama's lawlessness. In your opinion, looking at what you have seen here from what the president has done, is there any way that you would characterize it as lawlessness? I would not characterize what Obama has done as lawlessness. I would characterize it as exercising discretion that the law gives him, working within the framework that Congress has provided. Does that discretion then allow for the other side, if you are in opposition to this, does it give you any leeway whatsoever to, I guess, sort of stretch the law out a little bit, sort of test those outer boundaries? Because it seems as if we always have some ambiguous language here in a ruling every now and then, or in a law that allows for some sort of interpretation. Well, I don't think there's much leeway as long as Obama is in office. But since what we have here is just the executive branch exercising discretion, if the Republicans can win a national election, if they can get a Republican president, then they can undo this. And that's really where their remedy should be. Is that then just a stalling tactic, you believe, more than anything else, that this is what, and again, in your opinion, is that the best case scenario that the Republicans and the opposition have is to stall as long as they have to get down to that 2016 election? Well, no. I mean, honestly, I think they have a better chance than that in the courts. Not because I think that this is a legally sound argument that they're making, but because we've seen in the past that arguments that most people think are legally frivolous, when you're making them against Obama and you've got Republican appointees on the Supreme Court, suddenly those arguments do a lot better than anyone thought they would. So I'm really sort of flashing back to the Affordable Care Act litigation, where there were arguments that most people thought were just frivolous and outrageous, suddenly the Supreme Court seems like it's more willing to accept them. I've had about 30 seconds left. In your opinion, then, as far as the president's side, just ride this out because this is a temporary order and he will eventually be able to get what he wants? Or is there something else in the future here? Well, the president's going to appeal this. We'll see what the Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit says. That's a conservative circuit. It's got more Republicans than Democrats. 
This may well end up, up at the Supreme Court, and there again we've got more Republicans than Democrats. So I'm afraid that this is looking more like political litigation than straightforward legal analysis. Always comes down to politics one way or another. I think we know that, whether you're on the left or the right or in between. Kermit Roosevelt, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us your expertise. Thank you. Anytime. All right. The investigation into the shocking terror attack in Denmark continues. The focus now being on whether this was truly just another twisted individual with murder on the mind or something more. Midpoint will continue.